Now, an international committee of scientists and taxonomists have come together to name a list of new species. It includes an appealing carnivorous mammal, mm. a 12-meter tall tree that's been hiding in plain sight, and a sea anemone. Anemone, is that what they Animo? are? That Animone. <laughs> Animone. Animone, that lives under, a, under an Arctic glacier. I'm just interested in this tree. Where the hell is the tree hiding? <laughs> <laughs> but in a moment, in a moment, we're going to be exploring some of these creatures with a scientist from the Natural History Museum. But first, Sadia Chowdhury has a quick look at some of the science's tiniest newcomers. We always seem to be talking about the ones that have been and gone. Woolly mammoths that once roamed North America or the vegetarian Diplodocus, which remains one of the longest land animals to have ever walked the earth. But did you know that every year there are thousands of newly discovered species? This year, a group of scientists have identified 18,000 of them, including plants, animals, birds and sea creatures. At the Natural History Museum, scientists are just as excited about dinosaurs as they are about the wasp. PhD student Samar Mahmoud is visiting from Cairo and is helping to find out more about a recently discovered wasp. Just last week, the World Wildlife Fund released a list of 367 new species discovered between 2012 and 2013. Among them, this zebra-striped lizard, this skydiving gecko and this white-haired Burmese viper. But campaigners say habitat loss, the use of unsustainable natural resources, poaching and climate change all pose major challenges to the environment. They say thorough and consistent management of ecosystems is needed in order to help countries address complex and regional scale issues. And it's discoveries like these, which are painstakingly investigated and recorded by scientists, that show us that the world remains a truly wonderful place for exploration. Wow. Well, joining us now to explore new species in more depth is Dr. Andrew Polajek from the Natural History Museum in London. Good evening and welcome to Living the Life. Good evening. Good evening. Good Pleasure to have you. Now, there's 18,000 new species discovered every year. There's between 18,000 and sometimes up to 25,000 new species. Wow. But wow. that covers everything. So that's plants, animals, fungi, you know, the whole, the whole range of different organisms. Uh, and is it uh, always organisms. exciting? I mean... Because 18,000, when I think about it, I thought maybe you make you know, a dozen new discoveries, mm -hmm. but you know, if there's this significant amount happening every single year, does it have that level of excitement? There's always something exciting. I mean, obviously, the majority of them will pass unnoticed, mm -hmm. and that's in a way why we have this competition annually to select the top 10 species, the top 10 most exciting ones, that may be exciting for all sorts of different reasons. They may yeah. be quirky, they may be of some real benefit or importance to humankind. Now, uh, it's interesting, you say importance to humankind is, is interesting to me because there's so many, with so, so many new discoveries being made, why should people take interest in new species? What do they have to kind of offer? Well, the one thing is that we have to be reminded constantly that we actually share this planet with up to nearly two million other organisms. And most people aren't really aware of the numbers uh, involved. I work personally on insects, which are what, one of the most diverse, one of the most biologically diverse groups of insects. Now, insects are important in many different ways. Some are uh, vectors of diseases, some are agricultural pests, mm -hmm. and some, including the ones that I work on myself, are actually beneficial species. So I work on a group of insects called the parasitic or the parasitoid wasp and they kill other insects and that makes them of great benefit to agriculture because they act as a natural pesticide, a natural biological control but, agent. But you've got a, a I do have some here, here if you'd yeah. like to... Uh, Since you mentioned... Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'd love to. Yeah. I mean, what is that very large one on the right-hand side? Well, the very large one there, it's one of the biggest of the wasps and it's, uh, it's a thing called the tarantula hawk. That sounds as, terrifying. Well, as the, name, <laughs> as the name suggests, that huge beast um, patrols the, the rainforest, the floor of the rainforest, until it finds a tarantula spider. And then she, because this is a female, it's the females that do the pursuing, yeah. see. she stings the spider, paralyzes the spider with the venom, but doesn't kill the spider. And then she lays her egg on the spider's body. And her, her <laughs> baby, uh, the larva of the wasp, actually consumes the paralyzed tarantula spider, wow. slowly, literally eating the spider alive. Wow, so this is actually a, a fly which... A wasp. Wow. A, wasp. a wasp, a wasp, which a paralyzes wasp. a tarantula. This is a hunter, a natural exactly. hunter. Exactly. A tarantula. Most, that's the most frightening thing wow. I've heard in a very, very long time. That's so disconcerting. <laughs> so, are these actual um, life life size? These are real specimens. Okay, I see. So these are these are the actually the actual collected specimens that have been pinned and preserved in in ways that we do at. Uh, 
museums. And what I would like to draw your attention to, if I may, is the majority of them over here, uh -huh. the, the tiny size. They get down to less than a fifth of a millimetre. Wow. Um, there's actually on that card there, you probably can't pick it up on the camera, uh -huh. but the, the card there nearest my finger uh -huh. has the smallest insect, in, the smallest fully winged insect in the world, which is 0.19 of a millimetre long, just it's, under a fifth of a millimetre. Is that even visible? I, mean, I, I can see it from here. I'm wow. not sure if you can. Wow, that's it. tiny. It has, how can you tell it's wings? It's so small. Well, we, we study them under the microscope, of course. So before we get to this stage, course, we've been yeah. sorting through the material under the microscope. There's no other way you'd really you'd be aware of the presence of these creatures. Now, uh, no, 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 one of your colleagues, obviously, Dr. Uh, John Noyes. Uh, he's yes. the author of uh, Tinkerbella Nana. Now, now, what kind of insect is that? Tinkerbella nana. Yeah. Um, Tinkerbella nana belongs to this group of parasitoid wasps. So these are the ones that kill other insects. And it belongs to a family called the fairy flies. So they're not oh. flies, actually. They're wasps. But they're colloquially termed the fairy flies. It's a, it's a scientific name of the family is the Mimaridae. And they, uh. like a lot of these others, they lay their eggs, in this case, in the eggs of other insects. Oh. And Tinkerbella was just a quirky name. It's named after the fairy in P Peter Pan. Nana is the Greek word for small. And so Tinkerbell and is just a rather appropriate name for such a tiny creature. Uh, and I guess incredible. if it's a fairy fly, Tinkerbell links in with the fairy as well. That's it right, does. That's right. indeed. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the study of the top 10 insects. Yeah. How do you go about determining the ton ten, uh, top, top 10 species, I, should, yeah. I beg your pardon? Yeah. Uh, how do you go about determining which are the top 10? Well, the process goes like this. The authors, the people who actually describe the new species, whatever mm. they are, they can be, it might be a tree. This uh -huh. year we had a tree, a fungus, a few insects, a lizard. The people who actually make the discovery and describe the species are the ones that nominate their species for the competition. And from a short list of about 25 species, myself and a panel of 10 scientists all around the world decide, and often, as I say, for very quirky, never really for scientific reasons, they may the, just be attracted to the looking at the tree, tree just now yeah. as okay. well. Oh, this, this is, is one of the, the discoveries. Oh, yes. this, this really intrigued me because it, this is the first time this tree has been discovered. But... You know, how, how does one not discover a tree before? Because you think of a tree, I mean, I imagine the other instance, I mean, looking at what you have there, they're, yeah. they're, they're tiny <coughs> microscopic. microscopic. I will exactly. never go to bed without I fear know, ever again. This is, this is a tree. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. Um, I don't know the details of this discovery of the tree, but often with larger things, it might be that they've been living in a secluded part of the world, so they might be hidden in some valley that hasn't really been properly explored. The other thing is it may look like an existing species and people, until they've actually applied all the tools, all the weapons in their scientific armoury to determine that it really is new, they may just have assumed, well, it's the same thing that we've been looking at for the last 50 years. Yeah. Especially now with modern genetic techniques of DNA sequencing, things that we thought were the same are rapidly being revealed to be very different species. That's incredible. Fantastic. Well, that's incredible. so fascinating, yeah. Dr. Andrew Polichek. I can't tell you. Please do stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Well, okay. Please keep that miles All away right. from me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredibly no, frightening. Absolutely. absolutely.